This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 960, Good Enough, How to Overcome Fear of Failure and Perfectionism to Live Your Best Life by Kim Foster Carlson, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Saturday, welcome back, or welcome for the first time. This is where I read to you every single day to help you live a more meaningful life, covering personal development, productivity, and minimalism mostly, from some of the best bloggers and authors you can find, with their permission, of course. And this episode of Optimal Living Daily is brought to you by Away. Away makes first-class luggage at coach prices that allows you to charge your phone on the go. For $20 off a suitcase, go to awaytravel.com slash old and use the promo code old. That's awaytravel.com slash old and promo code old. It's been a while, but I have a book excerpt for you today. Kim Foster Carlson is an award-winning broadcast journalist, having spent the last 27 years as a member of the San Francisco Bay Area radio and television media. Kim Foster has worked as a traffic reporter, news reporter, news anchor, sports anchor, and talk show host. And thanks to Carolyn Copeland for making the connection and getting me Kim's book called Good Enough. I checked it out and I'll be reading the first two chapters for you. So with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Good Enough, How to Overcome Fear of Failure and Perfectionism to Live Your Best Life by Kim Foster Carlson. Chapter one, the P word. We live in a society that celebrates being perfect from beauty to brains. We all know someone who in our minds is the ideal person, the person in school who had all the friends, the friend who can whip up a gourmet meal with ingredients found in the refrigerator. In an ideal world, we would like to be happy with ourselves, but in the real world, we don't feel we are good enough. The best solution to becoming the best version of you with all your foibles and quirks is to embrace your imperfections. This doesn't give you permission to become a sloth and do nothing, but how great would it be to embrace your flaws, love the parts of you that you once thought of as your shortcomings and see them as uniquely you? Perfectionism keeps you from your true expression and creativity as well. It invites fear and doubt. Being flawless doesn't help fill you up. Being real and being flawed invites real connections to others. So what can you do to combat a bad case of the perfection? You can see mistakes as information that you must have to become successful. Learn something from them that you can improve on. Don't be proud of being perfect. Don't confuse perfection with high standards. Healthy standards are better. Practice being imperfect. Take a day to do everything imperfectly. Mistakes mean progress. Apple founder Steve Jobs probably had a few bad versions of a cell phone before he and his team invented the iPhone. Be kind to yourself. Perfectionists are critical of themselves and others. Be perfectly imperfect with being yourself. Chapter two, problems are a good thing. In his 2016 book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving AF, Mark Mance's counterintuitive approach preaches that life is essentially an endless series of problems. The solution to one problem is merely the creation of another. Instead of asking, how can I get rid of my problems? The question should be, what are the problems that excite me? What are the problems I'm willing to sacrifice for, to work for? Manson offers an example of wanting to get in shape. You can solve this problem by buying a gym membership, which gives you a set of new problems, finding time in your day to go to the gym, and budgeting the extra expense. Both are not bad problems to have, but are problems nonetheless. And that is the key to Manson's mantra. Find problems that you're interested in solving. Here's where perfection comes into play. If a problem arises, you have two choices. Decide on a solution or distract yourself from the problem. Distractions our perfectionist best friend. They can help you to pretend that the problem is not really there. What are your favorite distractions? Watching television, playing video games, getting high? Deciding on a solution seems like the much better way to go. Solutions are active decisions to move you forward. Distractions keep you right where you are, miserable. The key here is to honestly identify the problem and the distraction. If you have a job, for example, where you work long hours with a horrible boss who ignores you, promotes everyone but you, and basically makes your life miserable, you have a few choices. Find a new job, live with the fact that you are not appreciated, or confront your boss. If you're not looking at solutions, then you're probably distracting yourself with things such as watching way too much Netflix, eating way too much junk food, and sitting on the couch for days, weeks, months, and years. What a waste. 
So what can you do? Make a list of solutions to your problem. Make a list of your distractions and be honest. Which list looks better? I did this myself for a similar boss problem and can tell you it works, but it's not as easy as it looks. Many of my distractions had become habits that were difficult to break, but they needed to be broken. Not sure you're ready? Ask for help. Some people are afraid of therapy. My sister, who is a therapist, told me it's the mentally healthy people who come to therapy. The unstable ones think that everyone else is the problem. Support groups are always an option. They can be truly supportive and not just a place for everyone to complain about their families and each other. A compassionate friend can also be a great place to start. The more problems you solve, the easier it will get to work out the next problem that is just around the corner. Limiting the distractions are key. So put down that piece of cake, turn off the Netflix, and start writing those lists. Once you are on the problem-solution gravy train, the next stop is happiness. Happiness, according to Manson, occurs by solving problems. It's an activity. Completing a marathon makes you happier than eating a chocolate cake. Raising a child makes you happier than beating a video game. Starting a small business with friends and struggling to make money makes you happier than buying a new computer. The road to these goals can be paved with potholes, pitfalls, and perfectionistic procrastination. But once you get to the finish line, you realize that in fact, it was the journey that brought you the most happiness of all. You just listened to an excerpt from the book, Good Enough, How to Overcome Fear of Failure and Perfectionism to Live Your Best Life by Kim Foster Carlson. And thanks to Away for supporting my podcast. Away makes affordable, high quality suitcases that charge your phone, which I love. They do a great job to make your travel experience stress-free. 360 degree spinner wheels for a smooth ride in any direction. The luggage is theft proof with a TSA approved combination lock built in. And it's super durable, but very lightweight at the same time, which is great. And two USB ports with a high capacity battery. So you can charge multiple devices on the go. It's really cool. And don't worry about any of that breaking because they have a lifetime warranty. Away will fix it or replace it for life. I've always used a backpack as a carry-on, but I've had my zipper break in the airport and it's not easy to fit everything I need in there in the first place. Once I upgraded to Away luggage, my whole travel routine was revolutionized for the better. And Away has a special offer just for listeners of this show. For $20 off a suitcase, go to awaytravel.com old and use the promo code old at checkout. That's awaytravel.com slash OLD and promo code OLD. And again, the book featured in today's episode is called Good Enough by Kim Foster Carlson. You can find more about her and the book at kimfostercarlson.com, which I've linked in this episode's description. Thanks again to Carolyn Copeland for connecting us. And funny she mentioned Mark Manson. I just narrated him yesterday, so you can check that out if you want. But I'll leave it there for today. Hope you're having a great weekend. Thank you for being here and I'll see you in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits.